Tonight, as the British Transport Police send in the dogs. Just go that way! Vandals put their lives on the line. Drug dealers find there's no hiding place. Can you let us throw the barrier, mate, please? When Charlie's nose is on the tube. What do you call that? Puff. Puff, yeah. And splashing the cash. The Spaniel with a nose for ill-gotten gains. In this address, we've had a fantastic find. Uh, we believe in excess of £6,000. <laughs> It's 9 p.m. East London. PC Paul Wood is in a hurry. Oh dear, mate. This man isn't built for a uh, rally, unfortunately. He's being sent to break up a fight at a tube station. PC Wood is a dog handler with the British Transport Police. In the back of his van, trying to stay calm, is his dog, Duke. Duke is a seven-year-old German shepherd who spent five and a half years on the transport police front line, working alongside PC Wood. He's full of the zest of life. He loves working. From the moment he comes out of his kennel at home, he gets in the back of the van and off we go. More than 16,000 crimes are committed on London's transport system every year. That's around 45 a day, every day. It was going to be a busy night tonight. I've just got three people fighting a booking at Alton Park train station. Being thrown around in the back of a dog van on the way to a fight is all part of the game for Duke. He's uh, an experienced police dog, and on the way to the court, they get very excited in the back when the blues and twos are going on the, the police vehicle. You can hear them crying in the back because they know they're going to go and do something. <laughs> Right, everybody, clear back now. Right, get out of there. Right, if you're not travelling, can you leave the station now, please? Go that way. Just go that way. Go there. One of these two. Meanwhile, 24 miles away in northwest London, another German shepherd, Bear, is being sent to deal with an emergency at another railway station. Bear is a two year old, a renowned track and attack dog who has been with PC McEwen and the British Transport Police for a year. Bear and McEwen aren't heading for a fight. This is far more serious. Young men on the railway track. We've got a Rainers Lane and they've got uh, suspects on, the graffiti artists that are spraying the trains up. Spraying the trains up is not only criminal damage, it's dicing with death. Last year, 59 people died whilst trespassing on the live train tracks. Often sending in the dogs was the only way to find them safely. The dog's good in this situation because he'll track them and search for them. Essentially going to be pitch black up there. The problem is up there, live lines, we just do the best we can, really. Police officers do not go on to live lines. It's just too dangerous. Great roadworks. We're going to have to dig everything up on a Friday night. Back in East London, Duke and PC Wood have got the situation in the ticket hall at Upton Park under control. Almost. When we got to that call at Upton Park, there had been a lot of commotion in the actual um, booking hall. A lot of people milling around, a lot of shouting, uh, people being aggressive to each other. Well, from an One man is trying to help PC Wood, but Duke hasn't cottoned on yet. Oh, sorry, mate. Sorry. He was waving his arms around at the time, but he got just a little bit too close. Duke doesn't discriminate whether that guy's an innocent party or is actually to do with the actual offence taking place. Try not to wave your arms around too much. The man wasn't involved in the fight, but he knows what caused it. 
Uh, he has tried to manage, he has managed to run away. And where is your man? What's happened? The uh, two guys in there have uh, attempted to steal some money off the young guy in there. So those two have been arrested on suspicion of theft, but there's three of them. We can't find the other guy at the moment, but apparently they're at the front of the station all the time, uh, gambling. Hopefully, uh, when you get down to the police station, we'll be able to uh, find out who the other person is and uh, get him nicked as well. Tonight's going to be busy. There's another punch up going on. Another call to come out to my end for two people fighting in the booking hall. Alfred. In northwest London, Bear and PC McEwen are waiting to get onto the tracks to go after the suspected vandals. They're waiting for London Underground to switch off the power, which will bring trains and hundreds of commuters to a standstill. There's six, six or seven suspects on the tracks. Still, still down there. We need to seal off all the access points and uh, try and flush them out. The helicopter's owned by the Metropolitan Police, but it often works with the BTP, as the transport police are known. Should be with you in about four minutes. One, one. Kind of up. The power is off at last, and Bear and PC McEwen have already found how the trespassers got onto the railway. We pretty much knew that they'd been on the tracks, uh, and we pretty much knew that the hole in the fence where they'd certainly gone in through, so we went through the same hole in the fence. As soon as he went through the fence, his nose went down, he went up onto the tracks, led us along the railway lines. Bear was born to track. His sense of smell is ten times better than a human's. Tracking now. Yeah, if you're in phase, uh, India 9 on scene, over. Okay, I've got no one, um... The helicopter's thermal imaging camera hasn't yet picked up a heat source, but 500 feet below, Bear is definitely onto something. Juice is, juice is off. I wasn't too sure where he was taking me at that point. You know your dog's tracking, the nose is down, the tail's up, classic signs, and he's pulling in front of you. And the next thing we saw was um, a load of graffiti over a wall and it was still wet, so we knew that they'd been there. They've been down here, he's, he's tracking all over the place. They're sent all over the place. Coming up, Joey the Bomb Dog looking for trouble. A 75 grand block of uh, Semtex. Can Bear and McEwen grab the graffiti gang? Fresh scent everywhere. He's been here very, very recently. In northwest London, the search for a gang of seven suspected graffiti vandals continues with Bear, PC McEwen and a police helicopter in the lead. The power to this part of the underground system is off and there's chaos. We've got trains stuck all the way down the line with people still on them. Um, they've been there for ne upwards of nearly an hour now. Worse still, there's no sign of the trespassers, but Bear is still on their trail. There's fresh scent everywhere. Which basically means that he's been here very, very recently. He brought us up to this graffiti that they've obviously done. And it's now down to be working in conjunction with the helicopter. If they've gone to the ground anywhere, they'll tell us. 300 angry commuters are marooned on the tube trains, powerless, waiting for the police to find the men. We're back out for Indian 99. Um, we've got the blue lights visual with the BTP. Hiding out the road for his gardens, and you're all standing out very well, so I'm afraid nothing from us at all. Yeah, that's always good, you know, like to give up. It's time to give up and call it a night. But um, they've obviously left before we got here. Yeah, affirmative, I'm on the wasteland in Village Way, we're clear of it. Oh, get off me, you're muddy. Come on, let's go. Back in East London, PC Wood hasn't found a fight to deal with. 
but he has come across what looks suspiciously like a dangerous dog. Another transport police dog handler is with him, PC Curran White. A man and his dog has been stopped for travelling without a ticket. Is he chipped? I just you just bought him two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Okay. I thought it was a Labrador then. In my opinion, this dog is a Section 1 dog under the Dangerous Dogs Act. I'm going to make a quick phone call. PC Curran White's opinion matters. She is one of only three BTP handlers trained to identify dangerous dogs. She believes this is a fighting dog, a pit bull. The dog, in my view, is a Section 1 dog. Do you understand? Do you understand, what, do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Right, there's a certain sort of culture where these dogs are either used with fighting dogs or they're used as some sort of trophy dog that groups use. Yeah, which is, you know, and that's why it's been seized, all right? <laughs> The 1991 Dangerous Dogs Act enables PC Curran White to take the dog away and lock him up. But there are ways the man can get him back if he pays attention. Hello? Are you listening to me? Yes. Don't you want your dog back? Listen, but you're not, you don't look like you're paying much attention to him. I'm trying to explain I'm what's going to happen with him. Right? He's going, to, to, he's going to the kennels. OK, you're feeling rough. He's going to go to the kennels. He's going to be reviewed by an expert who will decide whether or not he's deemed to be a danger to the public. It'll go to court and you can apply to have him back. For the man, it's not OK. The police officers have come and taken my dog because they thought it was a fighting dog, which weren't the case because I just got him two, like two weeks ago. I got him as a Labrador, and I think he's a Labrador. He doesn't look like a pig to me. I'm not the sort of person that will put my dog into fights and stuff. He's not a very, very happy bunny at the moment, but uh, I wouldn't be either if I had my dog taken away. But um, young guys um, have them as a, like a status symbol and um, they take him out onto the street with them. But uh, in the end, it's a dog that ends up suffering because if it is a pit bull, he ends up being taken away. Uh, and the worst case scenario, they end up being destroyed. Until the dog's case is heard, he will be held in custody. It's got some uh, horrendous scars on his face, hasn't it? It looks as though somebody's had a good hold of that ear, doesn't it? Yeah. You look at him, you <laughs> it's hard to describe him as a dangerous dog, but it's, they're seeing the damage that a dog like that can do to another dog or to a person if they're that way inclined. They're not really a pet. If the dog is found not to be dangerous, his life will then be in his owner's hands. We'll go to court, and um, if the magistrate is satisfied that the dog isn't a danger, he has to be um, chipped tattooed, he has to have third party insurance, has to be neutered and when he's out in public he has to, have, has to be on a leash and wearing a muzzle. Then uh, he, he can be returned to his owner. If his owner decides he doesn't want him, then unfortunately he'll be destroyed. The British Transport Police have 85 dogs with all kinds of skills. With 3,000 stations and 10,000 miles of track to look after, they're kept busy. The BTP is Britain's only national police force and they have to deal with every conceivable type of crime or emergency. Britain's railways are now prime targets for terrorists as well as criminals. When four suicide bombers blew themselves up on London's transport system in July 2005, killing 52 passengers, the work of the British Transport Police changed forever. Liverpool Street Station, Central London. The order has been given to send in a dog. Come on, Joey Joe. Not just Come any dog. In. Joey is one of 27 transport police bomb dogs, specially trained to sniff out explosives or traces of explosives. A three-year-old Cocker Spaniel. He's worked with handler PC Neil Almond all his life. Joey's been sent to Liverpool Street to hunt for a rucksack which might contain a bomb.
Joey's nose has over 200 million scent receptors. We humans have only five. They enable him to filter through thousands of different smells a minute to rapidly home in on the one he's looking for. See the indication there, he's, he's static, he's not moving, he's looking for me to give him praise. Good boy, he's a clever dog. Good lad. <laughs> Joey is making it clear that he believes the rucksack contains explosives. He doesn't like giving the ball up that much. See how Joe. In 21st century policing, man's best friend has become a key weapon in the war against terrorism. But this is no bomb or a real security alert. Joey and PC Almond are being tested to keep them on their toes. The bag has traces of Semtex explosive. All I do with this exercise is for our dogs to receive training within the environment that they're working in. It's ideal for the dogs to have a find on the station. Exercises like this happen all the time in every major railway station. Rarely are the public aware of what is going on around them. The police believe this is the only way they can keep their bomb dogs and their handlers on top form. It gives the handler confidence that in reality his dog would find some explosives if they were there and it also gives the dog confidence that as he's searching bags he might well find something. In this case it's uh, a 75 gram block of uh, Semtex. Good lad. Six AM, Finsbury Park Police Station, North London. The BTP dog squad are on a mission. Getting ready to raid a number of houses of people suspected of stealing money from tube passengers. The star turn will be Charlie. His handler is Sergeant Palmer. Springer Spaniel Charlie is three and a half years old. He's the first dog in the British Transport Police to be trained to find cash. And uh, he was a gift dog. It was a family from Lincolnshire. Gave us Charlie. And uh, he's been with me now 18 months I've had Charlie. But before he can start work, Charlie's nose has got to be tuned to make sure he gets the right notes. We've got some money that we've trained with. We're going to uh, hide it in the uh, police station, get Charlie to find that. Money we're going to use is money that we get off the Bank of England. And uh, it's real money, but it's uh, all been cut up, so it can't be used. OK, we've got £50 notes in that one. £20 notes. He finds all pound notes, fives, tens, twenties, fifties. He also finds dollars and euros. All banknotes have a distinctive smell, no matter how old or how new. It's the smell of the paper and the ink. Uh, very strong. If you've handled money, a lot of money, you smell your hands afterwards, a very strong smell. So we're going to start off, we're going to go and hide some £50 notes first. And uh, we'll see how Charlie gets on with them this morning. Right, this is a harness. Once Charlie's got this on, he knows he's working. Where am I? I would describe Charlie as 1,000 mile an hour, work, work, work orientated, and uh, bang on for the job that he does. Good boy, Charlie. Look at him now, he's telling me now that there's something hidden there. He's completely frozen and he'll get more and more frustrated. And then his reward for doing that is... Wee! Good boy, Charlie! Good lad. Like all police dogs, Charlie is trained by the reward system. Find the cash and you get your tennis ball. He's run around like a lunatic and eventually he's got the scent. Once he's got the scent, you can see he's frozen over where it is and he keeps in there nudging as if to say, here it is, Dad, here it is, give me the ball, give me the ball. And there's his reward for it, look. In South London, PC Wood is also on a mission and for once, he's without his German shepherd, Chuk. The transport police are constantly on the lookout for new talent and PC Wood is here to audition one of Battersea Dogs Home's latest inmates. We uh, get contacted by Battersea Dogs Home uh, uh, occasionally uh, when they feel that they've got a dog that's suitable for a course. And uh, today I'm here to look at uh, a little Springer Spaniel. 
Over the last five years, 40 BTP police dogs have come from this famous rehoming centre. German shepherds, collies and spaniels, working dogs who relish life with the police. Hello. Oh. What's his name? Well, this is Jerry. How old is he? Uh, he's one year old. You're a lovely boy, aren't you? Springer Spaniel Jerry was abandoned by his owners after chewing up their furniture. And he's got plenty of drive and uh, wants to play all the time. And also, he won't let go of the ball, which is uh, ideal for us because the training that we do is uh, all play and ball orientated. Springer Spaniels naturally find and retrieve game as gun dogs. Transferring these instincts to a tennis ball and learning not to eat furniture could mean a second chance for Jerry. I think it'd be absolutely ideal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Meanwhile, Charlie the Spaniel, who's already got a police job, is hard at work, looking for the real thing, money. No more nose tests, the raids have begun. Stand still, stand still. Well, we're just starting the search now, starting to... Just giving Charlie a bit of a buzz round, keeping him on the lead because there's so much about. So if I let him off, he's just going to knock everything all over the place. He's looking for the centre cash. Two houses are being targeted at the same time. Charlie will be used to search both. The occupants are thought to be money launderers, experts at concealing cash. People hide things in really peculiar places, and that includes fridges, freezers, washing machines, backs of tellies, and including babies' nappies. No, okay. I've never seen so many bloody beds. Charlie, check. Charlie is able to search a house ten times faster than any police team. This time, he's found nothing. That's me finished here, Martin, now. We started at 5 to 9. It's now 9.32. So that's uh, 37 minutes. So uh, we've not done too bad. I'm quite happy there's nothing in there. So we'll go and give him a drink, and we'll move on to the next address. Three miles away, the second house has already been searched by uniformed officers. They've found nothing too, but Charlie is going to double check to make sure nothing's been missed. Ooh, be careful, whoa, 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 whoa. It can be risky work. <laughs> Dangers of a dog working in a house. So luckily it was a bit switched on there. We saw that, didn't we? The close call with the mouse trap hasn't put Charlie's nose out of joint. And neither are the kids' toys. I knew we were onto something because I could see that Charlie was becoming a lot faster and a lot more animated. Good boy, what you got? Good lad, what you got? Indication on the brown teddy bear. Okay, see so Charlie keep nudging the brown teddy bear. It's telling me there's something in there. The reason I gave Charlie the ball before we checked the teddy bear is that I have full trust in Charlie. And I know that when he indicates on something, there's something there. It would have been extremely difficult to have found the money without Charlie. But it required Charlie to use his nose to dig down and actually indicate inside the teddy bear. So a lot of people wouldn't even bother looking inside a teddy bear. Great result in here. We've uh, done two addresses this morning. But in this address, we've had a fantastic find. Uh, we believe in excess of £6,000. The man's been arrested on money laundering. So it's a great result for Charlie. So we're finished now. Back to the police station. Cup of tea, nice big bolio. And uh, give ourselves a pat on the back. Transport Police Dog Squad is nearly always at full stretch. When they aren't chasing criminals, they're keeping the peace. As darkness falls, Sergeant Palmer and his team are preparing to deal with 75,000 football fans streaming into London's transport network. Football duties tonight, Wembley match, England versus Croatia. So, uh, as we know, if England do win, it'll be a quiet night. If England don't win, then we could be in for some fun. Sergeant Palmer won't be working with cash dog Charlie. His second dog, German Shepherd Zen, is more suited to this task. Zen's a specialist in crowd control with a fearsome reputation. 
Okay, we're working as directed by Silver tonight, and that'll come through Alpha Zulu as usual on football days. Basically, what we're going to do is once we've uh, finished briefing, we'll mount up in the vehicles, book on with Alpha Zulu, go out, and uh, as directed, go to wherever we're needed. Backing up Palmer and Zen will be PC Curran White and her five year old German Shepherd Jasper, and PC Wood and Duke. The German Shepherds are an actual physical deterrent. Uh, you, you find that football supporters uh, will steer clear of you. Um, they don't particularly want to have any contact with a police dog whatsoever, and the larger the dog, then the better deterrent. <coughs> Sergeant Palmer's team won't be going to Wembley yet. First, they've got to go and see what's going on in Baker Street. This is a Globe public house. It's a very famous meeting place of fans on their way to Wembley. The dog unit is deliberately keeping a low profile. They want to avoid scenes like these. Football violence can flare up without warning and across Europe, police dogs are increasingly being used. But only when the situation turns nasty. Just the age with the inspector. Everything's going swimmingly well. Uh, there's no tension or no need for us to have the dogs out this time. So we'll just stay where we are. Dogs will stay in the van. We'll just do ordinary, ordinary policing work that we need to do and uh, wait to be called upon, really. Coming up... Hi, Wilson's down on the concourse pit. Drama at Wembley as the fans face defeat. Someone's gone off the, off the platform and onto the track. And another Charlie sniffs his way to success. So you got a bit of cannabis. You've got a bit of cannabis on you. At Wembley Stadium in northwest London, England versus Croatia has ended the way the transport police hoped it wouldn't, an England defeat. Now German shepherds Jasper, Duke and Zen are on high alert with their handlers fearing the worst. Disgruntled fans are already converging on the underground station. So how many have you got here? I've got three. Have we... The, our main problem here is here, isn't it? Right, so I'll put... Can you put two here? Yeah. We'll keep the other one over the back there. Over there, please. Yeah. Right, he wants us down on the concourse bit. All right, OK. OK. Yeah. An estimated 75,000 fans are expected to use the transport system to get home. And to make matters worse, it started to rain. Ah, be quiet. The dog squad knows it takes only one troublemaker to spark a full-scale riot. So they take no chances. When the crowd is getting too close, you never know if somebody's going to attack you out, out of the blue sort of thing. And that's why they get so excited, because they're, they're, they're keyed up for it as well. A tube train only takes 1,400 people. There are now tens of thousands of fans in the station. So the station's now at full capacity. So to clear the station of all people, uh, we, hold the, we hold the fans there. Uh, as soon as the station, the people are, in, are out on the trains and the trains are all clear, there's plenty of room on the station, the crowd will then be allowed to move back on. This stops any um, problems up on the station when we're, we're overcrowded and uh, pushing and shoving and stuff like that. But holding back the fans can also cause problems of a different kind, frustrations which can all too easily boil over. This can be one of the, uh, the areas now where we start getting flashpoints. Obviously people have been to the ground, they've been to the game, they want to get home, it's late at night, it's a wet night, and now the police hold them back, so this is where sometimes trouble can, can start. And it has. A fan has decided to try and walk home along the live line. We've just had a call that uh, as someone on platform five has gone off the, tr off the platform and onto the track. So as you can hear now, they're having to close the station, they're having to discharge the power on the lines, which is going to cause even more of a problem. It's quite a, quite a precarious situation at the moment. As the dogs watch the crowds of frustrated fans, other officers must go after the man on the tracks. The 
the fan who caused the shutdown is under arrest and the tube is open again. Thank you for your cooperation. I wiped most of the rain off on my legs when we were stood out there. Didn't you? You knew you wiped most of it on my legs. <laughs> Said a police spokesman. <laughs> I should imagine by now most of the fans are so fed up with standing out in the rain that they probably, um, probably all just want to get home as soon as possible. <laughs> like me, really. As a new day dawns, the transport police launch a crackdown at many of London's underground stations. They're after drug dealers and users who have been making life a misery for law-abiding travellers. PC Wood is at Beckentree in the East End, not with Duke, who's off duty, but with his second dog, Charlie. Charlie's five. PC Wood got him from Battersea Dogs Home. He's a border collie with a nose for drugs, especially in a crowd. Say so, mate. Hi, mate. I just explained to you, okay, this is a passenger drug door. He's trained to an account people coming in contact with drugs, okay? Doctor did an indication. He said, have you got anything you shouldn't have at all? Yeah, mate. What have you got? A bit of cannabis. You've got a bit of cannabis, haven't you? Yeah. All right, mate, just come over here. The quantity of drugs found doesn't matter. This operation is sending a message to those who think the police have gone soft on drugs for personal use. Can you just explain to the charges? The dogs have given an indication on them. So you said uh, two indications on the people that are coming in through the station here. Both of them have got, I uh, believe, cannabis. There's a guy over in the corner that's been searched. Um, he admitted that straight away he's got cannabis. And the guy over there, he's uh, said that he had a couple of joints. He's also got a lock knife and some other stuff as well. So it's uh, two really good, really good stops at the moment. You're having a great afternoon, you are, aren't you? Eh? Aren't you? While PC Wood is having a great time, PC Curran White is a worried woman. She took time off after the England-Croatia game, and while she was away, five-year-old Jasper, her track and attack dog, collapsed and almost died. They operated on me yesterday, yesterday afternoon. When they did open the stomach up, they found that the stomach was actually very badly damaged. Parts of it effectively were, were dead, it, it, not to put too fine a point on it. It was the next couple of days are, are gonna be critical. You poor, sad, sad old boy. Honestly, can't leave you for five minutes, can I? He doesn't look too happy, but at least he's here, which is considerably more than I was expecting this time yesterday. Oh, poor old beggar. Jasper suffered what is known as a stomach torsion, common in breeds like German Shepherds, and fatal in a third of cases. Jasper is now in intensive care. He's probably looking better than he feels. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It feels awful. Yeah. Considering what they actually found when you, when you opened him up. Now's the time to try him with a bit of solid material and yeah. see whether he can cope see with that. He... If he can, then we can start to give him a bit of nutrition, which should help the healing process. So. Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. What's this, then? In order to heal quickly and heal properly, he needs nutrition to help him to do that. Now, he can borrow nutrition from his body for a while, but if we can give him extra, it just helps the healing process work much better. So this is a test, really, to see what he'll eat. Something. Jasper isn't doing anything, and that includes eating. You know, he was near death's door two days ago, so I would get quite worried if he didn't eat for another two days. Then, yeah. uh, but, but usually the reason why he's not eating for another two days is because something's going wrong. So we'll see. Okay. I know he's, he's still, you know, not out of the woods, so... He probably spends more time with me than most pet dogs ever spend with their owners. It would be impossible just to treat him like a tool. You know, he's, he's part of the family. Anyway, he's, he's here, he's doing his best. So that's uh, play it by ear as we go, you know. In East London, Charlie and PC Wood are still on the prowl in Beckentree Station. It's the rush hour, usually for drug dealers as well as commuters. 
sounds to the right place. Just to explain to you, okay, this is a passenger drug dog trained to any account people coming to contact with drugs, alright? Dogs give right. an indication yourself. Just speak to that police officer there, mate, alright? Thank you, sir. we've got a bit of cannabis on him. Oh, he's sense of smell, he's, he's really, really good. And uh, he has uh, indicated on people that have been sort of like six to eight foot away from him, so he's still got the essence of, of where they're carrying. Charlie's picked up the essence of something illegal. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. It was really, really air scenting. As you can see, he was straining on the lead, and he's still air scenting now as well, so it could even be the guy with the uh, bicycle over there. Can you let us throw the barrier, mate, please? He's a good boy. He's a good boy. All right, mate. Yeah. You got anything on you at all? No, man. I've smoked a joint just now. You smoked a joint just now. Okay. What we do is we get a police officer to speak to you after these gentlemen. Man, in my camera, mate. You're speaking to me. Um, can you just uh, deal with this guy after he's been dealt with by the revenue? Yeah? The man with the bike is already in trouble. He hasn't got a ticket. And Charlie's still air scenting like mad. Do you smell cannabis? You clever boy. What's happened here? Someone's discarded the joint down there on the floor. So now we're talking about the 15 foot. So all the air sent in was because of the joint down there. It could have belonged to the guy over there on the bike. You good boy, aren't you, mate? Oh, Charlie's a good boy. Charlie's a good man, aren't you? PC Curran White's dog Jasper is making a slow recovery. He's out of intensive care, but not yet out of danger. I see what's doing. And we can sort that out for you. Okay. Jasper! Yeah, big man, how you doing? Well, you look a lot brighter, don't you? The vet who performed Jasper's emergency surgery is here to check up on his patient. Soon we'll know. Okay, we and, uh, may, may not send him home for the weekend. We'll see him. Uh, you're all right, all right. Patience. <laughs> Jasper's eating could be a sign his stomach is working properly again. You're a clever lad, aren't you? You know, when I found out what, how, how ill he was on, on that on Tuesday, I was in pieces, big man. You're looking pretty good, son, aren't you? Hey? That's a boy. Cautiously optimistic, I think, is probably the best expression for the moment. I know he's not out of the woods yet, but we're getting a bit step by step. For Jasper, there was no getting there. Within hours of PC Curran White's visit, he collapsed and died, aged just five. With an older dog, you know, it's sort of my retired police dog, he, 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 was, he was ill and he, he eventually had to be put down. With an older dog, you expect it. But, um... <sighs> 24 days ago, Jasper was at Wembley on the front line with Curran White, anticipating at least another three years on active duty. All handlers feel for any handler whose dog dies or has to be retired whilst in service. Uh, the dog is part of you, we're partners. It's bad enough losing a pet, but losing someone that you're working with every day of the week is, is absolutely devastating. Because Jasper was, basically, he was young and in his prime, you know, he's a fit dog, it was, it was a real shock, so... Coming up, Rafa the drugs dog, named after the Liverpool football manager, scores big time. And PC Curran White meets a potential new partner. Having another dog to focus on makes it a bit easier. Another day brings another phase in the transport police operation to rid Britain's rail stations of drug dealers and users. This time, it's the turn of Lancaster in northwest England. Today's enforcers are a two-year-old spaniel called Rafa and his handler, PC Mick Cook. Rafa is an elite passive drugs detection dog. 
named after the Liverpool football manager Rafael Benitez. Yeah, it's Rafael, the saviour, and um, his previous owners, a mad Liverpool fan. So he's obviously named after the Liverpool manager, you know. My dog's having more success than the manager at Liverpool at the moment. Success for Rafa the dog means only one thing. Identifying people who are carrying drugs or who may have been in contact with them recently. Hello there, it's police drugs dog going on, yeah. Hello there, what's your... When Rafa smells drugs, he goes to the source and stays with it. Right, this police pass the drugs dog, OK? He's giving an indication on you. You're going to have to uh, speak to one of my colleagues, OK? Yes, good boy. Sorry, can you just stand still for me, please? Let the dog walk past you. Yeah, sorry, he's given an indication on you as well. You're going to have to speak to my colleague here. OK, good boy. As we're getting up closer to, uh, to the couple there, uh, Rafa starts pulling, you know, towards them. Yeah. Because Graham's now uh, said he's got some drugs, I'm going to give the dog a reward, you know, so he knows he's found what he's looking for, you know. He gets his ball as a player, and that's, that's what it's all about for him. Oh, he's a clever lad. Good boy, lad. Rafa is just one of only a few transport police drugs dogs based in England's northwest, so he's got his work cut out. Liverpool, Manchester, all your, your big cities are busy drug wires, like, unfortunately. Rafa can't work around the clock. His special nose requires regular breaks. You've got a gland in the nose, dogs that uh, humans haven't got, which gives them this incredible sense of smell. And when it's constantly working, they get nasal fatigue, so we just give them 20 minutes rest, cleans it, takes their mind off what they've been doing for the last 40 minutes or so. Back in London, PC Curran White is at a loose end. Since her German Shepherd Jasper died, she's been on light duties. She needs a new partner. This is where all new transport police dogs are trained. Here we are, this looks like this is the boy. Otis! Yeah, you are. He's, no, he's coming with me. Hello. Hello. Otis, a German Shepherd, is only a year old, a puppy and a novice canine cop. Before he can hope to replace Jasper on the front line, he will have to undergo three months of rigorous training at this elite school. Only eight wannabe police dogs are allowed in each year, and not all of them make it through. This is us now for the next 12 weeks, and uh, hopefully... Otis and PC Curran White must learn to get along. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy, come Speak. Speak. Good lad. Good boy, speak. Basically, we need we need to sort of trust each other. You know, he's. I need to. And I. I need to know that. Uh, I need to know how how he'll react. It's, and, and obviously, the more time we spend together, the more I can I can work out how he's likely to be in any given situation. Also, I mean, he needs he needs to, ah no. No bites, that'll do. Steady. You're all excited now, aren't you? Good lad. You know, he needs to he needs to trust me as well, basically, that I'm not gonna shout at him for nothing or punish him. I need to make him understand clearly what I want him to do so that he knows that if he responds he gets he gets a big fuss. Yeah, he, you know, he's nice and lively, he's quite friendly. Over the next few weeks we'll see how he gets on, you know, cars and railways and all the rest of it. Let's try and get him uh, socialised as much as possible. Otis, come! It is quite strange, uh, you know, obviously nothing is going to replace Jasper, but having another dog to focus on helps, makes, makes it a bit easier, you know, to, uh, to get over losing him. Almost 300 miles away in Lancaster, Rafa and PC Cook are still disrupting the druggies who are using the railway. Rafa has scored six times so far, and he's not done yet. Hello, right, you're all right, passive police drugs dog, this mate. Give an indication on you're okay. You're gonna have to uh, speak to my colleague here. All right, thanks very much. The man quickly confesses to having recently smoked cannabis. Rafa's seventh success. But the searching officers have found something altogether more sinister a switchblade. Knives are now as big a menace for the transport police as drugs. 
seizing them is a priority, no matter what the reason for carrying. So he's been arrested on suspicion of an offensive weapon. We'll be taken down to the local police station where he'll be uh, detained and uh, interviewed regarding it. The man was not prosecuted for smoking a joint and he was acquitted of charges of possessing an offensive weapon after the court heard that the knife was one that he used for work. Good boy. Oh, he's a clever lad. PC Curran White decided not to take Otis as her new dog. She's still looking for a replacement for Jasper. Doc Martin gets a bit of a surprise next here on ITV1, one that he's none too pleased about. A volcano is about to erupt on ITV2 next, Pierce Brosnan stars in Dante's Peak. And more Muay Thai with The Contender on ITV4 next. <laughs>